All right, switch my brain on. Uh, here's a brain. The pituitary gland, the master gland, uh, it's here. It's uh, hanging down from the brain. This is the hypothalamus here. And the pituitary is directly connected to the hypothalamus, as we shall see. And it's an endocrine organ. All right, so we want to look at its cells in some detail. I've got a section here. Man, that's big, actually. I thought, this looks quite good. I haven't looked at this under the microscope yet, but <laughs> it looks quite big. Uh, it's a bit big to be a human. I wonder where this is from. It's too big for a mouse or a rat. I think it's too big for a human. But we can see this actually looks like a more modern slide than some of the other ones in my collection. And it looks well stained. I think it's stained with hematoxylin and eosin. So let's have a look at the cells of the pituitary gland. We can talk about the parts and the functions and the hormones and all the things, right? Actually, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna fit this under the microscope, am I? So we should probably have a look at this now. So if we look at the whole pituitary, we can see that there's a little bit of a wedge in the middle, there's a gap. And we can see a stalk which connected it to the brain, to the hypothalamus. We can see something wrapping around the stalk. And we can see um, a lightly stained part and a darkly stained part. We talk about the stalk, the infundibulum. We talk about the anterior pituitary, which is the dark staining part, the larger part. And we talk about the posterior pituitary, which is the lighter staining part. And the anterior pituitary has the pars distalis, which is most of it the pars tuberalis, which is a bit that's wrapped around the stalk, I don't know if we'll see that under the microscope or not, and the pars intermedia, which is um, the bit between the anterior and the posterior parts, really. And then the posterior pituitary gets called the pars nervosa, because it's nervous e. Um, and that's a good start, and it's the anterior, well, pars distalis, the anterior part, and the pars nervosa, the posterior part that we're most interested in. I haven't looked at this yet, but looking at it just like that, it looks pretty good, right? Um, so what have we, what have we, what have we got? Okay, um, well, we're right on the gap there, aren't we? There's the gap. Ah, there's the pars nervosa. Looks very nervy. Not a lot of cells. So this is a hematoxylin and eosin stain. So the nuclei are going to stain dark purple. And cytoplasm might stain pink or purpley. And there's not a lot of stain there. So we've got lots of nervous tissue. We'll talk more about that. Oh, there's a, there's a nice big blood vessel there. So the... Um, the pituitary gland is an endocrine organ, meaning it is secreting hormones. Is that actually there? Was that? No, it's under the cover slip. Uh, it's an endocrine organ, meaning that it um, secretes hormones. Hormones go into the blood, travel around the body within the blood, and then have an effect on tissues and cells at a distance that have a receptor for that hormone. And here's the anterior pituitary here, looks different, looks very glandular. And the spaces that we can see there are going to be the blood vessels. So that means, so there's lots of, um, there's lots of blood in here, because uh, lots of capillaries, because the hormones need to be released into the blood to get around the body. But also, the, the pituitary is controlled by the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus sends out hormones to the pituitary, which triggers these cells to release hormones that travel out to other organs in the body. So we have hypothalamic, pituitary, something else, axes. We have all these positive and negative feedback loops, like the hypothalamic, pituitary, ovarian axis controls the menstrual cycle and the changes to the endothelium, the endometrium in the uterus, right? Um, but beyond that, so, so there, is, um, there are capillaries in the hypothalamus, there are capillaries in the pituitary, and they're linked by little portal blood vessels so that hormones from the hypothalamic cells can travel through this portal hyperphysial circulation, this, this special bit of, of connected capillaries between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Those hormones can travel directly to the pituitary and then affect the cells here that we're looking at. 
So these cells look much more glandular, but I can see pink bits and I can see purpley bits. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So we can see different types of cells there. And as we go to the edge, we're seeing blood vessels and uh, connected tissues. There's a there's capsule and what around here. Okay, oh, hang on. let's go and have a look at the stalk. Uh, where's the where was the stalk? This is is up. I don't know. Uh, oh, there's the there's the uh, there's the stalk. Not not really much left of it. It's very bitty. That's not very helpful, is it? Um, so the pars tuberalis would be, um, essentially it is part of the anterior pituitary, it would be the, the bit that's wrapped around the stalk. Okay, so that's a mess, um, which is pretty normal. Um, all right, let's have a look at the anterior pituitary because this is the most interesting bit. There are a lot of words associated with the pituitary. So because the pituitary looks like a downgrowth of the brain, it gets called the hypophysis. Hypo below, physis growth, so hypophysis. This anterior part of the pituitary, which looks glandular, is called the adenohypophysis. Um, by the way, the reason the pituitary stalk usually looks messed up is because the pituitary sits in the cella tursca in the bone there and then it's covered over by dura mater and the stalk is connecting it to the brain so you take the brain out the pituitary gland stays in the bone right so you tend to tear or cut the pituitary stalk it's one of those impossible puzzles um, uh, now there are some interesting things here so okay the cells here make hormones they make growth hormone um, thyroid stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, prolactin, and adrenocorticotrophic hormone. And we're looking at cells here that stain differently, which tells us that we've got different types of cells here. So the stain, to go to a higher power, the stain, right, the, the nuclei look similar. In fact, we can see some very sharp nucleoli within the nuclei that's the purpley bits and then the uh, the cytoplasm the rest of the cell is either pink or very pale or a bit purple um, so the, the, the hematoxylin and eosin stain is staining molecules that are in the cytoplasm. And if the colours of the cells are different, that means the cells are making different things. So we don't have one pituitary cell that makes all of those hormones. We have different pituitary cells and m most of the pituitary cells will only make one hormone, which I think is very interesting. And that also means that if you have a pituitary tumour, one of these cells has entered uncontrolled proliferation and now you have lots more of that cell than you should have. But you, generally speaking, then most of the time, that's going to be producing one particular hormone at a greater level. So if one of these cells is making growth hormone and it forms a tumour, and now you've got lots of cells making growth hormone, you've got too much growth hormone and things start growing. And that goes for the other hormones as well, which I think is a fascinating fact. Um, now, we can see two different types of cells with this stain. I cannot tell you, I can't identify each of those individual cells. I'd need to use um, in situ hybridization or um, immunohistochemistry to identify what the cells are producing. But we can say that we've got two different types of cells. Look at these really pink, look at these really pink cells here, right? Now those pinky red cells, they are what we would call acidophils. They like acidic dyes. And those cells will be either somatotrophs that make growth hormone or mammotrophs, also known as lactotrophs, that produce prolactin. So the somatotrophs make growth hormone, growth hormone drives growth. The mammotrophs make prolactin, mammolactin, they drive um, milk production in the breast. Um, 
after pregnancy. Um, now there's not quite as much stain in here as I thought there might be was hoping for. So we can see that that nice that nice pinky stain. These other cells are going to be basophils. They just haven't picked up a lot of stain. The cells that have got a bluey purpley stain to their cytoplasm are basophils. And then we can see the occasional cell. I saw one. Where's it gone? Um, that really don't have any stain in their cytoplasm at all. And those are the chromophobes. Like, they don't like any stain. They're, they're probably not producing anything. But we're not really interested in those. We're interested in the, the basophils. So the basophils, again, we've got three types of cells that stain with uh, a base dye. That's, that's what's giving the purpley stain to the, um, to the cytoplasm. You've got the cortic... Some of these will be corticotrophs. Cortico, so that's referring to um, the adrenocorticotrophic hormone that they produce, adrenocortico. So that hormone is going to have an effect on the cells of the cortex of the adrenal gland, adrenocortico. So the corticotrophs will make adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH, which will trigger the cells of the cortex of the adrenal gland to make cortisol, steroid hormones, uh, and androgens. Um, and then some of these cells with the bluey purpley stain will be gonadotrophs. And the gonadotrophs will produce follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Those have an effect on the gonads, hence the gonadotrophs. Um, uh, in the ovary, for example, the follicle-stimulating hormone will drive the development of the gamete, of the oocyte. So drive the development of the follicle in the ovary, right? If you know your, if you know your biology there. And luteinizing hormone will trigger release of the um, ovum of the egg at uh, ovulation. What's the, uh, what's the other job of the pituitary? Uh, to affect the thyroid gland yeah that's right. so thyrotrophs um, so thyrotrophs will make thyroid stimulating hormone and they will stimulate the thyroid gland to release thyroid hormones and thyroid hormones will um, raise the basal metabolic rate of the cells throughout the body right so we can't tell exactly which cell is producing which um, hormone, looking at this hematoxylin and niacin cell, cells, hematoxylin and niacin stain, but we can say that those pinkish cells um, are acidophils and the bluish purpley cells are basophils. Uh, yeah, so that's what's happening in the anterior pituitary. It's uh, very glandular, we've got lots of cells producing lots of different endocrine hormones and each cell produces one hormone type except for those um, gonadotrophs which produce FSH and LH. All right, how are we doing? Um, now, if we slide back to the other really important part, so if this is the anterior lobe of the pituitary, very glandy, lots of, lots of tiny capillaries in there, and other blood vessels, and if we slide to the pars nervosa, the nervous part of the pituitary, um, the pars distalis, uh, the pars nervosa, sorry, and then we zoom in. We're not, it's not actually going to look very interesting. <laughs> but you can see how it looks different, right? So the pars nervosa, what we've got here is we've got lots of unmyelinated axons. So the axons of neurons that start, that start in, so their cell bodies in the hypothalamus, and the hormones um, oxytocin and vasopressin, which is also known as antidiuretic hormone or ADH, those hormones get sent down those axons and released into the posterior pituitary. Oxytocin is the cuddle hormone, the hormone that's so important in social bonding. Um, and also drives childbirth and uterine contractions and um, 
the development of the breasts to produce milk after birth and all of those good things, um, vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone is going to go and have an effect on the kidneys to balance the amount of water and salts in the body, right? So th those hormones are being released by the axons here. Um, the other cells in here are support cells, so a bit like the glial cells, the support cells we see in the, in the nervous system. Um, the other cells we've got here, the pituocytes, are supporting those neurons. If I can find a whole bunch of little vesicles collected together in the pars nervosa or in the posterior pituitary, that will be a herring body and that will be the end of the axon where uh, those hormones will be secreted from. There we go. That there, that looks like a herring body. Um, yeah, neurosecretory vesicles. Um, so lots of little vesicles there containing the hormone uh, that's going to be released by the axon. But that, that's about it for the posterior pituitary. Um, okay, let's um, go back out again. Pars nervosa, posterior pituitary. Nervous looking. And then we've got that, that gap. That's the hypophysial cleft. So that's a gap there. So this here, these cells between the hypophysial cleft and the pars nervosa, that's the pars intermedia, the middle part. And really, this is another part of the, um, the anterior pituitary. Yes, we've got some secretory cells and bits and bobs going on in there. Oh, and we can see um, in the cleft, we've got some colloid collecting in there. Um, yeah, so hypophysial. Hypophysial cleft, pars intermedia, the glandular looking bit of tissue between the cleft and the pars nervosa. And then there's the pars distalis there. Lower power, the purpley bits look a bit more purpley, I think. Okay, there you go. That's what the pituitary gland looks like down the microscope. Really, we're most inter interested in the pars distalis and the pars nervosa, the uh, anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary is very glandular. Different types of cells releasing those different types of hormones each. Pars nervosa, axons extending down from the hypothalamus releasing oxytocin and vasopressin. The master gland! Another one of those little tiny bits in the body that's absolutely vital for survival and normal function. Um, and sometimes it goes wrong. Okay, see you next week. Thank you.